Hello there. So this morning what we're going to do is we're going to run through a, a REST client in iOS. So we're going to build an iPhone app that can talk to our Azure uh, web server using REST. The wonderful, one of the wonderful things about REST is that we can, it's what we would call client neutral, which means any client that can talk REST can talk to your service, which is a really great feature. So we're going to start out um, by creating a new Xcode project. So I'm using Xcode on the Mac. We'll make it a single view application. And then you can call this whatever you'd like. I'll say call rest example. We're not going to use core data. We are going to do this in Swift. And it's just going to create it here for us. Create the project. And um, we'll need to sign this. So I've got a developer account, so I'm able to sign that. So we've got that going. And what we have here is a storyboard that's created, which will have our user interface. We have our main view controller, uh, Swift code. And the very first thing I'm going to do is wire up uh, four buttons. So I'm not going to build a lot of user interface on this. We're going to use the debugger to basically look at the values going and coming uh, from the, the service. Uh, the reason for that is because I'm not really trying to teach you how to do iOS development as much as I am showing you how to connect to a REST server using iOS. So uh, the bottom line is this, this uh, UI will be very, very simple. And um, so what we'll do here is we'll start out with our controller and if we can get a little real estate here this is always the challenge on a smaller screen this is why many developers have large monitors just to deal with this okay so what we want to do is I'm just gonna put four buttons on the form and the first one will be called get and you can probably see where this is going. And then we'll do a post. And then we will do a put. And finally we'll do a delete. So we'll show you how to do all four of those in this iOS app, calling our Azure West REST service. Make that button just a little bit bigger so that we can see that. Now, we need to wire up the the actions for each one of these. And to do that, I'm going to use, um, again, Xcode. And what we will do is um, I'm holding down the control key. And I'm, and I'm, hold, I'm click and holding the left mouse button to drag over to where I want the code to appear in the Swift control uh, in the view controller .swift file which is um, and then when I let go it's going to allow me to change this from outlet to action and then I'll just say something like uh, pressed get and I'm going to do that for all four of the buttons so again control Drag. This is we press post. This is a little trick if you don't know how to do this in iOS. It makes your life a lot easier than having to actually do all this in code the other way. So, um, so press put, and finally we'll do our delete. Make sure that you select action on each one of those and not outlet. Outlet lets you access the, the button itself. Okay, so with that, um, we don't need the storyboard anymore. And so here's our four methods, and we're going to focus on get to start with. And before we jump into this, let's look over here. Um, this is um, uh, DHC. Um, which, by the way, is changing to RESTlet. So if you 
get a notification from DHC. So here's some of the data that we have out there, and we're going to run through the different ways that we'll uh, deal with this. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do, and, and a lot of this code will be the same on all of these, and we'll see how far we get in this video. I may do get in this first video and then do uh, post, put, and delete in a subsequent video. So, because uh, we'll spend a fair amount of time on the setup on this first one. So, let's just create a rest endpoint variable. And it is going to be this endpoint. So, we'll copy and paste this in. And the thing that's different here is we need to go ahead and put HTTP on here. So, we'll do that. And then we need to convert that to a URL. So this is just warning me that it's never used. And we'll see several warnings through here, but when we're all done with the code, you'll notice that it, uh, it works fine. So we need to convert this to a URL, and we're going to guard this code so that if there's an error that we catch it right here. rest endpoint else and we're just going to write to the console um, on everything so that's what we'll be watching and we'll debug so this is just making sure that we can convert what we uh, passed in as a URL used to be called nsurl uh, that's changed with Swift so, um, all right. Now uh, we have a URL. Now we need to make a request, a URL, a URL request object, and so that's going to be a URL request, which simply has the URL that we just converted in it. And then we're going to set a couple of values. So before we can call our REST service, we know that we're passing in some headers here. We've got a content type, and we've got an API key both. So we're going to look at those, and we'll talk about how we set those up. So we'll just set a value on here, and the first one we want to send is application JSON, so application slash JSON, and we have to tell it what that is. That's for HTTP header field, and that is for the content type. So that's how you set a header. It's pretty easy to do. Nice object-oriented way of doing things. So we'll just uh, set another value. So we're just doing key value pairs here for the headers. And this one is going to be the actual API key. We We've secured this with an, behind an API key, so basically the REST service will not respond unless you pass the proper API key in as a real basic security feature. And by the way, we'll be um, oops, I missed a comma up here. We'll be adding some videos on some more in-depth security shortly. Um, so this is for the field API key, all one word. So that sets up our header for us. It looks like I have a typo there, so we'll fix that. Okay, next we need to get a session. We'll get a session, 
actually we need to get the session configuration first. Then we need to get the session. Using that configuration that we just got. And obviously you could collapse this code. You'll notice that I do a lot of verbose coding just to explain things as we go. Um, now we need to set up an asynchronous task that we're going to use to actually call the web service. So and we're going to give it the URL request. Completion handler. And we're going to have coming back to us data response from the service and the error. And then I'm just going to dump the dump these out. And again, um, there's more concise ways of doing this, but this will give you a, a quick a quick way to see what's going on. We want to actually see the response coming back from the server. That'll give us a, a response code. Is the is the most interesting part of that, we want to see if we got a 200 back or a 201 or 204 or a 404 or whatever it happens to be, and that will all come back in this response object. And the other thing we want to get back is data. Sometimes our service sends back data, and so we'd like to see that as well. This is all going to just be dumped to the console. Okay, and task resume so that we can continue on. And that's all there is to it. That's all it takes to call um, get on our service. So let's try it out. And what you're going to find here is there's going to be an error, and I'll explain that here in just a minute. So we're running, running with the simulator. It's always a good idea to actually try this out on a real phone, but because we can't, it's hard to record exactly what's happening on a device. I was thinking about maybe shooting video to do that, but the, the simulator will work for learning about how to do call rest. And when we hit get, let's get ourselves a little bit of room here. So we can see what's going on. What you'll notice here is we got an error back, and it says basically that the resource cannot be loaded because App Transport Security Policy requires the use of a secure connection. Essentially, what that's saying is your uh, iPhone apps, when they're calling out to the internet like this, they have to uh, be on secure connection. And being so, we don't have TLS or uh, SSL set up on this. Um, that's a problem. So the way around that is to turn that off so that you can call things directly uh, using um, without a TLS. This is the HTTP part, so it wants HTTPS basically, and we're not going to we're not going to set that up. So I'm going to show you how to get around that. But the reason Apple put that in is to help keep your iPhone application and your iPhone itself secure. And so um, you want to make sure that you do these kind of things on secure connections. For example, this will be passing the API key, and if we had credentials, we'd be passing those um, basically straight across without any encryption or anything, and that's a problem. So 
I'll show you how to fix this, but uh, just keep in mind that you want to you want to address that. So what we're going to do is uh, open up your info p list, which is your configuration for your program, and we're going to add a row. And in there, uh, we want um, app transport security or NS app. It used to be called NS app, NS app transport security and you'll notice now it just says app transport security and under there we want to add an item called allow arbitrary loads that's a boolean and we want this set to yes Okay, so the, it's a dictionary type, app transport security settings. You notice this was all preset. All I did was just, in, just uh, include it and then set the Boolean to yes. And then we can save our plist. We don't need that anymore. And then we can go ahead and run this again. Okay, now what we want to do is watch what goes on down here in the console. So let me... Uh, Let's try to open this up a little bit more and let's get our simulator back up. And let's hit get. Okay, and so what you'll notice is we got back a 200. And we got some data. It says we got 1860 bytes. 1800 bytes, but we can't really see what that is. And so we're going to change this to do some, we're going to actually have it dump out the data in a format that's readable to us. And the encoding on this will be string dot encoding.utf8 so all this is doing is just getting that data printed out in a form that we can see it so let's try this again now this won't be exactly in JSON format um, you can we'll look at how you can actually parse JSON at some point with uh, iOS but right now uh, this is just going to dump everything so let's do the get here and so here you'll notice all of our data coming back so it does work. We're pulling that data back across, and that's all there is to using uh, an iOS client to actually go out and connect to your Azure West REST service and call it. Um, also, we're passing some custom headers through, so you see how we do that. And you notice that we got our response code back. So the next video, we'll, we'll come back and do um, post, put, and delete, which won't take very long. And... Um, so keep watching. Thanks for watching this.